The other thing that you can do is, so charms here, if you move your mouse over to the bottom right, or you can also, you know, swipe right if you're using a touch screen like I am. And we have a bunch of the charms here. So search, we're all familiar with. Share um, is cool in your game because we can see this a bit later. You'll be able to see some options to share via social media or mails. Um, we also have uh, start devices and settings is another one that we will be using in the game later on too. One more thing that we want to make sure that we have in our game is the app bar. So you can either, let's see, swipe up from the bottom if you're in an actual app, which we can see with, um, I'll show it in the game now. This is that platform starter kit that we have too. So when we start the game and we right click it, we can see here at the bottom that we have the options to do hello or chime sound. And once again, we those were the charms here on the right that I was talking about. So you can share stuff about the game in the mail or um, the settings. And I'll just turn off the sound here. You saw me pop up the privacy policy and that's something that you must have if you're connecting to the internet. So we talked about sharing the game via mail uh, or any social media. That's when you would want to make sure that you have a privacy policy. We saw your ad still there so you're making money by showing that. Yes. Is that why you showed it to us again? Yes. <laughs> that's exactly why. So if I go back over to GameMaker, we're going to look at actually implementing some of this stuff. So if we go into our Let's first go look at the level one room. If we zoom out here, actually no, sorry, I wanted to look at the splash, I think. Yes, so if I zoom out here on the side, you can see that we have this Windows Features object, which you might have been wondering before what that was. So now that we know it's actually implemented here, you know, one of the before you close that, one of the yeah. interesting things uh, about what you're showing right now um, is the Windows feature actually doesn't have to have a GUI item to it. Mm -hmm. um, that's actually one of the things I really like to um, for things that don't have a visual interface. Um, like uh, if you want to look at your screen again, the one on the right uh, has a little question mark, and that's normally what you see. But in my games, when I build games, I actually like to put a visual representation of it on the screen so that I know that that level has that so they can very easily see like for that one for example has the Windows features on that screen uh, makes it very clear to uh, myself as a developer to know that I've included it so yeah so I'm gonna go over and actually look at the Windows feature object so back over in the tree here we have objects Windows feature and if I go in here to the create code, oh, firstly, you'll want to make sure that you have, let me zoom in, the visible and persistent check marked off. So we've made it persistent because we want uh, this code to persist beyond this room. So in many other levels that you have in your game, we want it to be visible. And we did talk earlier about the two different ways to work with GameMaker, whether it was drag and drop or the GameMaker language. You'll be wanting to implement the Windows features with GameMaker language. So we're going to look at some of that code right now over here in the create, execute piece of code. It's actually a great point uh, when you're going to uh, show them this code is that we talked about drag and drop in uh, GameMaker language. And these features, you actually there's no way to do them in drag and drop. So you have to use GML to do these features. Yeah, so just going back to reiterating the fact that these starter kits are really great to work with. So if you're not familiar with how to implement these Windows 8 features, you can look at the code here, which I'm about to walk through, but a great way to start off with if you haven't done that before. So let's look, um, if we go down here, so we pointed out here in the comments that Windows 8 functions need to be written in GML, and we'll go down a little bit to look at so here in um, when line 21, 19, we're checking to see if we're actually using Windows 8 so that we can implement the features. And then if we go down to 25, that's where we start talking about the app bar. So we're turning this on to make sure you know, that we're actually putting the app bar in there. And then below this is where we have all the buttons that you can use. So this one is a hello message. 
those are the chime ones. So before I showed you, um, I pulled that bar from the bottom and played that chime sound and that hello message. So that's where this comes in. Uh, so the first parameter is the button type, so button, and then the second one is whatever um, message you want to show there. Actually, sorry, that was the third one. The, set, the second one was the type, and the third one um, was what you want it to do. So these are obviously uh, hello world samples, right? Um, mm -hmm. You would probably want to put maybe a pause uh, in there or yeah. uh, maybe uh, the store in your game in there, things that actually mean something to your game. So uh, these are very uh, easy, simple chime, simple hello world stuff, but it shows you how to implement it. Right. And here uh, we have, you'll notice that this one says global. So you'll want to see, and also the restart one, whether it's global or not kind of depends on what you're doing with it. Something like restarting the level, you'll want to be global and be an option no matter what level of the game that you're in. Same with something like the pause option that Daniel was mentioning. Uh, so if we keep going down, we can see here over on line 41 and 42, that we, are, we have the option to put in the share charm. So it's Windows 8 share text and it's saying, I'm playing a game on Windows 8, won't you join me? So here you could have whatever fun share message you want to do. That showed up before when I was, um, when I put my cursor down to the bottom right and it came up here in the share charm for our game. So it could be fun to put in uh, Facebook or Twitter if you like to use those things, if maybe you defeat like a big boss in your game um, or a really high level, you'll want to share that and do some bragging to your friends on Facebook. Or if you just want to share the link, the mail option is good for that too, or Twitter. And, and uh, actually the great part about that is uh, with the share charm, um, you don't really have to do anything. So um, on the right, depending on what you have installed, uh, if you have Facebook, if you have Twitter, if you have other social medias, I think it showed mail uh, on this machine uh, as a default. But um, you don't have to build in the Facebook stuff. You don't have to build in the Twitter stuff. Those apps implement the share charm. So you just pass it to that, and it makes it easy for you as a developer um, of your game. Yeah, very true. So over here on line 45, we are looking at the settings charms. So that's before we're also still on the right, you know, down here in the settings. Um, that's where you would want to put in the privacy policy option. So like we said, if you're using Facebook, Twitter, any sort of social media or mail, accessing the internet with your ads, you definitely need to have a privacy policy to pass certification. So you can go and set that up yourself and then put that in into your settings the same way we have the code in here. And that's, that's actually worth repeating. So we've seen a lot of uh, apps uh, get refused in the store um, because of that. If you're accessing the internet at all, you need a privacy policy. Uh, it's very simple to do. You can see on there it was just a UR URL to freeprivacypolicy.org. You'd probably want one on your website uh, and you can just put the simple privacy policy on there and that will be one uh, way that you're not going to get rejected from the store because it's a very easy one to miss and forget in your game. So how did you put the privacy policy in your game? I just have a uh, simple link uh, from um, my game uh, to my website, and I have a page uh, that it directs to that says the privacy policy for yeah. it. So they could put it on their own website yeah. or and I grabbed anywhere. A, I grabbed a generic one. Yeah. I mean, I'm not doing anything at all with their data. Um, yeah. The only reason I have internet is for Flurry, for analytics, and for the ads. I need it. I'm not doing, using it for anything else. So. Yeah. OK, cool. So then if we keep looking through the code here, we can see that we are, where was it? Oh, here, snap mode is very important. Um, snap mode is a really cool feature that comes with Windows 8. So if you want to minimize something and snap to the left or right while you're working on something else, we want to be able to pause the game because you don't want, for example, if you have a game that's on a timer, you don't want it to keep running and you get killed by the enemy or something like that while it's snapped to the left or right. So what we want to do is we want uh, the screen to check for this. We want to check for the screen size, and then if it is um, a certain less than max size, or less than a certain size of the screen, we want it to pause. So, so when you snap it, the the screen for the game gets smaller, and so we're just measuring yeah. that size and figuring out. Okay, well if it's this size, we're in snap mode, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we have that also over in the resize code here. Does it? more clearly.
So here you can see it's looking for the size of the window here, and it says stop all objects other than this one performing their code. Snap mode is on, so snap mode equals one. Otherwise, you want all objects to continue playing the game. And then snap mode is off, so snap mode equal to zero. So it's really easy to implement that in with a couple lines of code. And we can actually go back and take a look at that, um, all of this stuff running one more time in our game just to give kind of a refresher of all the cool features. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't have double of our game installed here. And go over and run this again. Slowly. <laughs> yes. There so uh, just a little refresher of all the features. We have at the bottom the app bar, that hello message, the chime. Here's the hello message up there. Over on the right, we have the, ch the charms, not the chime. The charms, we have the share option to send a mail. We have our privacy policy over in settings. And let's look at the snap mode. I might need to window this. And that's not. One more try. I'm trying to do it with touch screen. Okay. There. There you go. There. <laughs> And it has um, a little error message, so you could do um, something like this, leave snap mode to continue, or you could do one of those big pause icons. Um, just another chance to get creative with your game. And So it's really up to you to decide yeah. what, what you put there. Yeah. But the key feature is you want to po pause whatever action is going on in your game. Right. So. Yeah, so in my um, Mysterious Mushrooms game, what that is, it's that is counting down on a timer. So you're trying to shoot the mushrooms before dark, dark falls. So what if, about the artichokes? Are they there too? <laughs> that's not part of it. That'll be my next game. <laughs> <laughs> so for this one, for in my game, if, um, you pull, if you pulled it to the right and you, or the left and you snapped it, you don't want it to continue because otherwise you're going to get a really low score and it'll hit nightfall and you, you'll be terrible at the game. So for my game, I have it to pause on snap, um, just like we showed here, but yeah. that's just an example of you know, how having the pause and the snap helps your game not... Cool. Yeah. Cool. So that was everything I actually wanted to show for the awesome Windows 8 features. Um, those really enhance your game experience on the platform. But other than that, I hope that you've learned a lot with our advanced techniques for yeah. Game Maker. Yeah, we want to uh, absolutely thank you guys for coming. Uh, we enjoyed presenting this today. Um, there's some really cool stuff, uh, the, the skeleton stuff, the Windows 8 features, um, kind of a, a short deep dive into GML. And uh, if we haven't answered your questions so far, uh, we will be sticking around to uh, answer your questions, so keep asking them. Um, we're here to help you guys uh, make cool games, and mm -hmm. uh, we'd love to actually see the games you made if you start to Yeah, to you have our Twitters, um, our blogs, so please share with us whatever you create, or if you have any more questions after today, you know how to reach us. Great. Thanks for coming, bud. Thank you. Bye.